In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Please be seated. We give thanks to you, Lord God, for you have called us into your house this morning. Amen. That we can have another chance to prepare for you. Amen. O Lord of our hearts, be our King and our God, that we might be your people. Amen. Good morning. I know the classic has happened. Clearly, it is classic time. Nevertheless, we still have work to do. And so I want to talk to you about the gospel passage because this gospel passage is very interesting, not simply because of the text that is in the passage, but where this passage falls for us. You see, we call this day Christ the King, but we also know that this is the last day of Pentecost and that next week we will be going into the season of Advent. And so the question, we all know that Advent is about the incarnation, preparing us for the incarnation. But here we are with this gospel passage talking about the crucifixion. And we may wonder why. Why on the Sunday before the start of Advent are we talking about the crucifixion? And yes, it is about Christ the King, but is the passage simply about Christ the King because of the text here is the king of the Jews? No, no, no. And so we must acknowledge that this passage is trying to tell us something more. And so why before Advent? Because in some way, this passage is to prepare us for the penitential season of Advent. And many of us don't think of Advent as a penitential season, but almost akin to Lent, Advent is indeed a penitential season. And so why then are we penitential before the incarnation? Because the baby that is to be born was born to be slaughtered. The baby that was born was born for the crucifixion. And this, beloved, is the gift that God gives to us at Christmas, the gift of our redemption and our reconciliation. And so if I were to title this message for you, I would say that Jesus Christ is not the king you expected. Jesus Christ is not the king you expected. You see, the people of Jesus' day, they were looking for a Messiah. They did indeed expect a Messiah. And that Messiah was to be a mighty king. As the prophecy of Isaiah says in Isaiah 9, chap uh, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and his government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Oh, they were looking for a mighty king. They expected a mighty Messiah. And so it harkens us back to the triumphal entry of our Lord into Jerusalem, what we call Palm Sunday. And the people are hailing him, Hosanna, Hosanna, save now, save now. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Save now. They're, they're, they're throwing palms at his feet and honoring him and throwing their coats underneath him so he can walk on him on them. And that harkens back to the prophecy of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey 
riding on a donkey's coat. The people had welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem as this king who was to be their Messiah. But Jesus Christ is not the Messiah, not the king you expected. And so the people revolt. And here he is in today's gospel lesson hanging on a cross between common thieves. The same king who the people had just extolled and, and, and followed in triumph is now hanging on a cross. And the people are repulsed by the idea that their long-awaited Messiah could, could hang on a cross. And so, save yourself, shout the religious leaders. Save yourself shout the governmental authorities. Save yourself, shouts fallen humanity, identified by the thief. You see, their pride could not allow them to understand why Christ would allow himself to be crucified. And so what kind of king is this? What kind of king is this that would allow himself to be crucified? What kind of king is this that would not save himself? What kind of king is this that would not save himself and those who are suffering along with him? But Jesus Christ was born for this. And we see that in St. Dismas's response. St. Dismas, the thief on the other side, in verse 40, he says, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? Jesus Christ was born for this. And that good Christmas carol says, you know, good Christian men rejoice. I mean, never mind the fact that it ignores women. Forgive me for that. I didn't write it. But he, he, the writer says that Jesus Christ was born today. And he speaks of joy and he speaks of bliss. And that Jesus Christ was born for this. And the author speaks of peace and our triumph over the grave, and that Jesus Christ was born to save. But within all of that, beloved, because that is true, but the undergirding truth of Jesus Christ being born today, and Jesus Christ being born for this, and Jesus Christ being born to save, is that Jesus Christ was born to die. He was born to hang on the cross. Jesus Christ is not the king you expected. He is not a king for us to become a chosen people, for us to usurp the Jews, and now we are the chosen ones, and they are the exiles, and establishing our stature so that we can walk around with pomp and circumstance. He is not establishing some sort of special kingdom for the exceptional and for the select few. But Jesus Christ is a king that we might make the totality and the reality of the crucified risen one incarnate in the world that we might make the crucified risen one become flesh in the world, that we might make the crucified risen one real in the world. And so as we get ready to enter into Advent, beloved, let us not spend all our preparations on the trappings of Christmas. The commercials have already started. They're getting us ready for Black Friday and for our Cyber Monday and we're getting ready for our holiday parties and we're gift shopping and we're trees hanging and we're getting our decorations ready. Let us not spend our, all of our preparations on the trappings of Christmas. Likewise, beloved, even those who are not doing all of that, let us not simply focus on the superficial beauty of the incarnation. 
seeing only the cute baby Jesus. How adorable. How cuddly. Aw, isn't he cute? Amen. Rather, let us remember why Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born to die. This child won't be with us long. Imagine mothers, imagine fathers knowing that you give birth to a child that is sentenced to die before he even comes into the world. This child won't be with us long. And the purpose of the incarnation about which we prepare, the purpose of the incarnation is the crucifixion. There would be no need for the incarnation. There would be no need for the crucifixion, if, for the incarnation, for Christmas rather, if there was not going to be a crucifixion. Likewise, there'd be no need for a crucifixion if there wasn't going to be a resurrection, then ascension, and thus our redemption. But the incarnation comes so that the crucifixion could come. So let us prepare for the king that is made incarnate. Not the king that we want him to be, but the king that he is. The king that is greater than any king we could ever imagine. The king that sees his power, but doesn't use his power to smite his enemies. Rather, the king that dies for us. The king that doesn't pull himself down off the cross and pull us down off the cross, but the king that calls us to stay on the cross with him. This is why Advent is a penitential season. Because this precious child to be born, this child that will come into the world of his own accord, of his own will, came into the world, came unto us in order to hang on the cross and be crucified. And so, beloved, let us prepare our hearts, our minds, our souls. Let us prepare ourselves, let us prepare each other to receive the baby Jesus, the King who came to die. Amen.